Hey guys, Josh here. I've been playing the Japanese version of Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life for a bit more than a month now on the Nintendo Switch. And if you don't know yet, this is a remake of Harvest Moon A Wonderful Life, which first came out in 2003 for the GameCube. I loved the original game, but it did have some flaws. So in this video, I would like to share with you 10 ways in which I think this remake improves on the original. So let's begin. And the first thing you will notice when you start a new save file is that you can now create your character. In the original, you could only play as the male character and there were no options to change your hairstyle, skin color, outfit or anything. The game was later re-released as Another Wonderful Life, still on the GameCube, in which you played as a girl and there were a few different outfits, but still there was no way to really customize your character more than that. Then on the PlayStation 2, the game was re-released again as a special edition in which we were back to playing as a male character and with some outfits that would change with the seasons, but that was pretty much it. Now with the remake, it's like all of those versions of the game combined as you get to first of all pick your gender, all of the different outfits are back and you will also unlock more as you play. You can choose your hairstyle, hair color, eye color and also your skin tone, which will affect how your child will look. It's not the most in-depth character creation, but there should be enough options to let you create a character you are interested in playing as. The second improvement, which is something you would expect from any remake, is the addition of so many quality of life features. I went back to the original game last year and there were so many little things that I found frustrating and all of these have been fixed. For example, now when you harvest crops or forage items such as wildflowers, you no longer have to put each one in your bag before picking up the next one. You can just keep pressing A and pick them up one right after the other and it's a lot faster. Also now when you sell items to Van, such as those flowers that you will forage, you can now sell 10 different items at once rather than one at a time, which makes things a lot faster as well. There's also now a bell for the chicken coop. There was only one for the barn in the original game. So now it's a lot easier to bring all of your chickens and ducks outside and inside in an instant. Also, until you unlock the alarm clock, you will automatically sleep until 6 a.m. the next day. Whereas in the original game, you just slept for six hours, no matter at what time you went to bed, which meant that if you went to bed early, like let's say 8 p.m., you would then wake up at 2 a.m. and you would then need to sleep one more time if you wanted to wake up at 8 a.m. in the morning. On top of all of these things, you also have access to more information on the HUD, like your stamina, for example, but there's also a setting to hide it if you prefer. And the menus contain way more information overall, like the status of your character, your animals, your friendships, the interests and skills of your child, and so much more. You can also remap buttons, which is a welcome accessibility setting. All of these little things just add up to make the experience a lot more pleasant, and I feel like it will definitely be hard now to go back to the original game after playing this one. Number three, and probably my favorite improvement, is how farming is a lot quicker and efficient. In the original game, it was so slow and tedious, Yes, it was actually my least favorite part of the game, which is sad to say about the farming game. It did have some great mechanics like the fertilizer and all of the hybrids you can create, but everything was just so slow and painful, especially considering that you had to water crops twice a day in summer. I very rarely used all of my fields just because of how time consuming it was. With the remake, first of all, the actions are a lot quicker and like in the Rune Factory games, you can just keep pressing the action button and your character will move automatically to the next tile, making tilling the soil and watering very fun, satisfying and simple. You can also now plant seeds or fertilizers in a three by three square, so nine at a time. And most importantly, you can upgrade your tools like in most other games in the series, where you go from basic to bronze, silver, gold and more each one covering a bigger area. In the original, you could buy lighter tools that would consume less stamina, and there were some special tools also covering slightly bigger areas, but these took a pretty long time to unlock, and in the first GameCube version, the watering can that was supposed to water multiple crops was actually bugged, and didn't even work as intended. So the new tools in the remake really make a difference, and overall, I really enjoy farming, and even watering or fertilizing twice a day never feels tedious. Speaking of tedious, one thing that really annoyed me in the original was how your character was always hungry. You would just go one day without eating and your character would always stop whatever they were doing, their stomach would rumble for a second or two, and that would keep happening all the time and you had to eat a lot of food to make it stop. Now first there's a hunger bar so you can actually see how hungry your character is, but also it does not go down as quickly as before and when your character does feel hungry, you will just see a little hungry emote and you will be able to continue working 
instead of stopping for a few seconds, which was really annoying. Usually, I just have to buy a crab sandwich from the Bluebird Cafe every few days and that keeps my character happy, but of course you can also cook. And that is my next point, cooking in the original was a bit tough because there was no list of recipes to choose from. You would find recipes as you play either by talking to characters or searching around their house, but you would have to memorize them or write them down, go to your kitchen and select the correct ingredients by yourself. With over 80 something recipes, it was difficult if you wanted to try cooking all of them, or if you just needed to cook something quickly but couldn't remember a recipe. Now, when you learn a recipe, and you will learn many from the Harvest Sprites, that's one of the new features of this game, you can go see them once a day to learn a recipe. And now once you know a recipe, it will become available to select from your kitchen. So you will still be able to cook the old school way by selecting ingredients manually, or by picking a recipe from the list. This makes it a lot easier to cook, and if you're trying to make all of the dishes the game has to offer, you will appreciate this change. Which brings me to point number six. If you do want to cook everything, collect everything, make all of the hybrid crops, get all of the different fish, and all of the other things you can get in this game, well, there is now an encyclopedia that will help you keep track of your progress. There's not necessarily a special reward for completing the encyclopedia, or maybe there is, I haven't done it yet, but if you are a completionist, the fact that you can now track your progress will easily add dozens of hours for you to invest into this game as you try to get everything. They also added a system in which you collect wonderfuls, which are kind of like achievements, and there are 88 of them, so it will be a fun challenge just trying to get all of them, and along with the encyclopedia, this should make the endgame a bit more interesting. And speaking of endgame, this remake keeps the story pacing from Special Edition. So the original GameCube games could feel a bit tedious or long to some players because the six chapters were spread out over 10 years, and in the last years, there really wasn't that much to do, but the pacing was then improved with the special edition where each chapter was only one year. So this is the same in the remake and it makes the game feel slightly faster than the original, but still leaving you plenty of time to enjoy life and relax. In fact, I would say this is probably the most relaxing game in the series, and I find myself spending a lot of time just walking around or fishing for hours, enjoying the music, sound effects, and scenery. Don't go into this game expecting something busy like Pioneers of Olive Town. A Wonderful Life is a lot more slow and laid back. And also they kept the Heaven mode, which is the seventh chapter where you can just keep playing even after finishing the story. So in the case where you don't have time to complete something like the encyclopedia, well, you will be able to work on that even after the story ends. And for a lot of people, myself included, the story and the characters are what really makes A Wonderful Life stand out from other games in the series. The developers know this very well, and one of the biggest improvements of this remake is the addition of over 70 events, little cutscenes with the different characters of Forgotten Valley. For example, between the marriage proposal and your spouse moving in, you will see an event where they come over at your house to chat and dream about how married life together will be like. There's also an actual wedding ceremony by the pond where you can choose the gender of your future baby, and once you have a child, you will see lots of new events, for example, spending a day at the beach with your family or seeing Takakura playing with your child. There really are a ton of new events and those add so much life to the game and make you really attached to your child. The festivals have also been slightly improved. There is still only one per season and they are mostly just dialogues, no mini games or interesting rewards or anything like that, but they are a bit more fun. For example, now during the Harvest Festival, you will be asked to bring some produce from your farm. For the New Year party, you will be asked to bring a dish and it's just little things like that. I still think the festivals could have been improved a bit more, but those added interactions make them a bit better than before. I have to admit though, besides the new events, the wonderfuls, the encyclopedia and some outfits, there is not a ton of new content in terms of actual features or activities to do on a daily basis. You will take care of your crops and your animals, which should not take too long. You will then go around and give some presents to villagers, and then you can either go fishing or digging. There is one little addition, however, and that is the bulletin board. On the 1st and 6th of each month, you will find some requests from the villagers and you will be asked to bring them certain items. And it could be as simple as egg or milk, or a bit more complex like making a specific dish that requires hybrid crops. In exchange, you will get things like seeds or produce, but from time to time, you will also see some unique requests that will reward you with things like an alarm clock or items that will trigger events with your family. Those items are not necessarily new to the remake, but they could be not as obvious to get in the original as they relied on events where you had to be at the right place at the right time. So it's very convenient to now being able to see them on the bulletin board 
and the fact that you have to get certain items in order to unlock them. And lastly, one big addition to the remake is that there is now same-sex marriage, so you can marry any of the bachelors and bachelorettes, no matter the gender you pick when you create your character. In A Wonderful Life, you do have to get married by the end of the first year, as a major component of this game is raising your child and growing old with your family, so it is great to see that we have more options for everybody. While the girls look pretty much the same as in the original game, they did revamp the appearance of the guys, as they were not originally designed to be marriage candidates. They also added Gordy or Cody, we don't know yet if they will change his English name, as an eligible bachelor. So these are the 10 most interesting improvements over the original game that I found in my experience of playing the remake. Do you agree with my list? Are there some things that I forgot or that you don't consider to be improvements? Let me know your thoughts and also, I will be honest, this game is not perfect and there are a few downgrades from the original as well. So let me know if you'd like a video on this topic, leave a like and subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you all in the next video.